Shalom, Yeshua. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Recha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing to the Ophelia Akim that's preached the word in all truth and sincerity, along with the Israelite foreigner brothers that are like the heathens. But the line of outside goes back to the nation of Israel, which the nation of Israel are you so called Negroes. Latinos and Native Americans through the prophecies and curses of Deuteronomy 28 chapter and throughout the Bible. So this is Brother Yakal, a month by the lesson, and on today's lesson will be entitled For Many Great Miseries it Shall Be Done to Them. I just gonna go on some precepts and uh Lord willing, you brothers and you sisters out there be edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shimon Shai, you know. And um, before I start the lesson, you know, I define that word misery. And um, it means a state or feeling of great distress or discomfort of mind or body. And some of the synonyms is uh, unhappiness, distress, wretchedness, hardship, suffering, affliction, uh, anguish, anxiety, torment. You know, so that's right, man. You know, and this is all going to apply to these wicked people of the world. You know, uh, beginning with two thirds of our people, that's not going to repent any to the nations. You know, because when you read Second Acts eight and fifty, it reads, "For many great miseries shall be done to them." You know that in the latter time, which we're living in the latter time right now, in the last days, shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. Right. So that's why the Lord. Is going to be bringing these great miseries, man, you know, such as the famine, the pestilence, the race wars, uh, you know, the FEMA camps, concentration camps, you know, people getting destroyed by a uh, uh, wild beast of, of the desert, man, you know, and we understand that all these, all, all this is going to come and pass because of prophecy, you know, because... No one's going to be able to escape Jacob's trouble, you know, except for the elect of Israel, because the elect of Israel is going to have the hedge of protection, you know. And um, when you go to um, Isaiah 11, 11, it reads, And it shall come and pass in that day. I'm sorry, um, Jeremiah 11, 11, I'm sorry. Jeremiah 11 and verse 11. And it reads, Therefore thus saith Yahweh by Shimon Shai, Behold, I will bring evil upon them. Right, so the Lord's going to bring evil upon these people, man. You know, and I'm going to go more into the evil. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expound more into the evil, what the Lord's going to bring, you know, in this lesson. It says, Which they shall not be able to escape. So, yeah, so Yahweh by Shimon Shai is going to bring evil upon these people, that, which they're not going to be able to escape, man. You know, it says, And though they cry unto me, I will not hearken to me. And this applies to Israel. This was applying to the Israelites back then. You know, the wicked Israelites, they didn't repent. You know, it says, Then shall the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods to whom they offer incense, but they shall not save them at all in the time of the trouble. Right? Because, you know, our people are engulfed in idol worship. You know, worshiping uh, Jesus Christ, you know, Cesare Borgia, being a Muslim, being a Kemet, you know, uh, being an atheist, you know, so uh, our people worship all these gods, these false gods under heaven, under heathen nations, but when all hell break loose, their false gods are not going to help them at all, you know, and, you know, because these people, they are very prideful, man, you know, uh, pride is at an all-time high, man, by way of, uh, entertainment industry your, for your movies your, your sports you know uh education you know high school college you know everything everybody's just pride man we're going to get the definition of pride according to the bible because the lord that's one thing the lord hates he hates pride man you know and when you go to Sirach 10 and 12 it says the beginning of pride is when one departed from your house right so that's the beginning of pride because once you depart from your Habash Moshai, of you being an Israelite, because the heathens, they were given, uh, the Lord gave the heathens uh, 
unto idol worship. You know, they don't have a God, but we have a God, us Israelites, us so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Americans. So once an Israelite departs from Yahweh Bashmah Shah, that's great pride, you know, because you're supposed to be the righteous, but you're doing the opposite. You know, you're being wicked, and which we know the Lord program our people to be like that, you know, but uh, that doesn't um, negate the fact that Jake is still doing wicked while being reproved by the prophets, man. You know, they still got to be held accountable for their actions, even though the Lord is putting the Holy Spirit, not the Holy Spirit, but even though, even though the Lord is putting the Spirit on them to be rebellious. You see, it says, uh, the, the beginning of pride is the one depart from Yahweh, and his heart, which is your mind, is turned away from his maker. Yeah, so, because once Jake's mind is turned away from Yahweh by Shemon Shai, they start to be engulfed in idol worship and start being like the heathens. You know, because Jake always want to be uh, Jake, the wicked of our people, two thirds. They always want to be like the heathen nations, man. You know, it says, um, I'm sorry. Verse uh, 13, for pride is the beginning of sin and he that have it shall pour out abomination. And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. Right. And that's all that's. What the Lord's gonna do with Babylon the Great in America, man. You know, because you have the man of sin that's in power, which is Esau Eden, the so called white man. You know, and all he does is promote sin and iniquity. You know, from adultery, from, uh, you know, uh, being a mole, you know, uh, these drag queens, you know, this, I can't say certain words, but, you know, this. Full out wickedness, man, that Esau pushes out in the media to influence our people to deviate from Yahweh by Shimon Shai. You know, promote to our people that being a thug is cool. You know, being a hoe is is, is, is cool. You know? So the Lord's going to overthrow this place utterly, man, with these calamities. And in a nutshell, these will be the plagues, man. When you go to, um, leaves in uh, Sirach 10. Um, is it Sirach 11? You go, go to that priest of all time, forgot, uh, death. Let's see. Because the plays is not going to be for the righteous, it's going to be for the wicked, man. Um, let's see. Apocrypher. No, it's one of the Apocrypher. Since the rock somewhere. And I can't think of that precept. Uh talks about death, bloodshed. See. Oh, Sirach 40. Sirach, yeah, Sirach 49. There you go. Um it reads uh death. And bloodshed, strife, and sword, calamities, which is destruction, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked, and for their sakes came the flood. Right? So, these these plagues, these judgments, you know, came for the wicked. You know, starting with Esau, even the so-called white man, because he's in power right now. But it also applies to two-thirds of our people and the heathen nations. You know, so... That's why the Lord is bringing uh, these plagues because of prophecy, man. Because the kingdom of heaven has been prophesied, man. So we understand that every kingdom has an end. And the end of that kingdom always came to a violent uh, uh, up, uh, 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 to a violent um, uh, destruction, man. Rather it, was, rather it was from, you know, other kingdoms conquering that kingdom. But this time, the Lord going to destroy this place by missiles, man. It's not going to be like the uh, common, um, the uh, the common conquering of a, a kingdom, like in the ancient world, when other king kingdoms led by the king will conquer other kingdoms and make that kingdom that they conquer uh, subordinate to them. It's not going to be like that with America, because the Lord going to uh, uh, put the spirit on the heathen nations to shoot missiles on this place to destroy this place, man. Destroy the whole land. America, man. You know? So, 
you know, that's those many great miseries, man. People just imagine people dying of famine. And Lord willing, we be protected from that, man, because we don't know if we're gonna be exempt from that. That's why we say, Lord willing, and you know, we do the works in fear. You know, because ultimately it's, it's Yahweh Shmon Shabbat or that's the Holy Spirit being placed upon us to be in the Shufa to do the work because it's not of our own will. But also through the fear we have, man, we don't want to be caught up in these plagues, man. You know, just imagine just dying of famine. You know, your body is slowly pining away. And the scriptures talk about that, man. In the book of Lamentations, let's get that. You know, because the Lord is going to make these people suffer, man. You know? See, it's all funny, right? It's it's all fun and games right now, man, when nothing is going on. You know, when you can go to your storehouse, when you can go to your house, play the PS5, Xbox, some watch the movie, you know, you can go, you know, deal with women. See, you can do all these things right now. You have liberty to do so. But what happens when the Lord visits this place, is going to start visiting this place, putting his spirit on each side to cut off this food supply and the water supply and, you know, um, this, you know, storehouses being found empty. What you going to do for your Israelites, man? You know, we know what we're going to do. We're going to trust in your how about Shimon Shai. Lord willing to the end, man. You see? Uh, but this is uh, Lamentations 4 and 9. It says, They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. Right. So it's better to be it's, it's better to be killed with the sword, which the sword today would be the modern day gun, than to be die than to be, you know, they than for you to die by hunger, by starvation. You know, because at least, you know, you could, you know, by you getting killed by the gun. You know, which is a modern day son, a uh, modern day sword. I'm sorry. Um, that's a quick death. You know. But it says, for these pine away, stricken. For, talking about the body, stricken through for one other fruits of the field. Right. So, you know, your body starts to pine away. It starts to eat after itself. You know, after a period of time, you're not eating food and drinking water. So. You know, these people, they're going to be looking like uh, skeletons, man. You know, skeletons with meat on them. Just like them, you ever see them commercials when um, them Hamites, some so-called Africans, the real Africans, because we're not Africans, by the way. We're Israelites. Um, you know, when them Hamites, they be, uh, them babies, they be hella, uh, you can see their bones, through they, you know, they look hella sick and skinny. That's how these people are going to be looking very soon, man. You know, and we do not want to be in that predicament, man. You know, it says, verse 10, the hands of the pitiful women have sodden their own children. Right. So these women that, you know, these, even these women, they're going to be uh, boiling, which that's that's what sodden means to boil their own children. You know, because this happened before in our history. When you go in the book of Kings, I believe it's in Second Kings, the sixth chapter, um, as a woman, they were, you know, they she 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 was uh doing the act of cannibalism, man. She ate her own son. So a lot of these women that, you know, that so called love their children, they're gonna be the same the Lord gonna put the spirit on them, they're gonna be the same ones to uh eating their children, man, all to fulfill prophecy of cannibalism, you know. Cause cannibalism is the fruit of famine. It says they were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. See, so the Lord's Hey, man, we don't want to be on the Lord's bad side, man. So that's why we do the best we can. You know, we always put the Lord first, you know, and, and our works and to the Lord wanting, he can, you know, we can get that hedge, man. You know, because it's going to be well with the righteous, man. You know, you know, yeah, you know, Lord willing, we are, the, we are those righteous men in the eyes of Yahweh by Shimon Shai. Yeah, we're going to go through a lot of things and we're going to be tested. But remember, the Lord said, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, he going to protect his elect. His servants going to eat and drink, man, you know. But uh, let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes 8, because I said earlier that the elect, they're going to be well taken care of, man. Um, the point is in verse 12, I'm going to stop verse 11, Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 11. It says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Yeah, so the sentence is a judgment. So, you know, for example, the evil will be adultery, right? We know according to the law, 
If a man sleeps with another man's woman or a woman that's married to a man, her husband, sleeps outside, sleeps with another man outside her husband, that's adultery. The adulterer and adulteress both supposed to be put to death. But that law is not being act, uh, enacted here, you know. So, you know, that judgment is not being executed speedily for them to be put to death. It says, therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Yeah, because, you know, they think that they, they since they got away with it, they thought they got away with it. But really, they didn't because the Lord sees everything. Um, they, they, keep, they keep continuing to wax worse and worse and be more evil. You know, it says, though a sinner do an evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged. Yeah, because he can keep doing the same uh, 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 act of adultery for many times, for many years, for for his whole life. And he just never got judged. The Lord, the Lord is prolonging his days. Uh, the Lord is letting that man or woman build up their iniquity so that judgment can be great when he finally judges him. It says, Yes, surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear Yahweh, which fear before them. See, it's going to be well with those that fear Yahweh by Shemoshai, which are the elect of Israel. Because, you know, remember the scriptures say, you know, that uh, there is none above him that fear of the Lord, man. You know, yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, you can't be rich in this society. You can have the, the lust, you know, you can have all your heart's desire here in America. You know, you can have all the accolades, the the inspiration amongst these people. But if if you're not rich towards Yahweh by Shimon Shai, then the Lord don't give a damn about you, man. You know, see, the prophets are the real high value man of the Lord, the elect, you know? And the world's going to understand that when the Lord is going to make his power known among his elect, man, his prophets, so the whole world can know who the Lord, who the Lord is dealing with, you see? It says, verse 13, but it shall not be well with the wicked. So it's not going to be well with the wicked, man. Even though it can it can seem like it's going well right now because they're not getting judged. You know? But remember, the Lord is very long-suffering. He will not at all quit the wicked. So the Lord will, is going to get these people, man. You know? It's not going to be well for them, man. It's going to be a point in time when they're going to be in, in straits. You know? They're going to be asked out. They're going to be wondering when their next meal going to be. You know? So, but it's not gonna be like like it's not gonna be like that for the righteous man, because the Lord doesn't forsake His saints that put their trust in Him, as it's written. It says, "Neither shall he, he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feared not before Yahweh." Yeah, so, you know, we just wait for the Lord to bring that judgment, man. You know, in their own vain hearts, they think that they got away with it. You know, for, and uh, you know, Esau he thought he got away with everything. You know, but now nah, the Lord, that's why his judgment going to be great, man, because the Lord remembers everything Esau did, man, to us. See, it's things we don't know what Esau did to us, man. It's like, see, it's, it's a lot of things that we don't know that these Edomites done to us, man, in slavery that the Lord knows. You know, in the scriptures time out, the Lord going to have his fury upon us, man, to judge Esau. And just imagine what the Lord's fury, fury is, man. We're not mad enough, <laughs> you know? So, so yeah, I could, that was pretty much it. I just want to make a quick lesson on that. You know, Lord willing, I was edified, you know, and until next time, Shalom.